Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit since my last post but I'm back in the new year and I have a few videos planned out which I think will be really great for the new year. And the first thing I wanted to start with was how I edit my photos on Instagram and my blog. So if you want to know how I get my color tones and photos looking very bright and airy, keep on watching. filter that I created in Lightroom last summer when I was on vacation because some of my pictures were starting to look a little bit dull and I couldn't really find one filter that made my feed look really cohesive and put together. Most of my pictures looked like they were taken on different days, which they were, or with different cameras and it just was kind of looking a little bit messy for me and I wanted it to look a lot more put together. So I decided to download Lightroom and I tried out some other people's presets and they were a little bit too something, like they were too moody or they were too dark or they were too orange or too pink, which I know is really in style right now, but it's just not really my style. So I um, took some of the features that I liked from different presets and adjusted a lot of the things that I typically adjust in um, my photos when I just download them on my computer. And I created some custom photo filters from that. And I've been using those since last summer. So um, probably it was around end of August, September that I had developed like the preset that I use across all of my photos. Since I started using these custom filters that I created based on what I like and what looks good on my skin tone and my pictures, I've increased my following on Instagram quite a bit and I think it's because of my photos, the quality of them, and when you look at my feed, most of my photos look like they really go together. And that's what I wanted to do and that was my goal with these uh, presets I was creating. So I wanted to share how I edit them with you guys today so that you could see the little tips and tricks that I do to make my photos perfect every time. So first I start with the base um, photo filter for every photo. I never really start completely from scratch and adjust little things here and there. I pretty much always start with one photo filter and then adjust little things after that. So luckily for you guys, I sell all of my custom presets on my blog. Um, they're under $10 each. They're super easy to download, really easy to use. And um, all five of them are available on my blog. So you can go to the link in my bio and you can download any of these that I'm about to use um, for yourself so that you can match exactly what I'm doing on your own photos. I'm going to show you how I edited some of the photos that are already on my Instagram account. And I'm going to edit a new one that I'm going to post when this video goes up. So first I'm going to start with this photo I took in a parking lot of a Big Lots behind a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it was a really um, misty, what's the word? Foggy. It was a very foggy morning and I thought that this would really complement the uh, project that I was working on. So this is a project that I did with Adidas. So um, this is the before picture and I'm going to have it right here so that you guys can see the buttons that I'm clicking along with when I'm doing it. So this photo as it is, is fine. <laughs> it's not special, but it's not actually that bad. The coloring's pretty nice actually. But um, I do like my photos very bright and um, a little bit more on the warm tone side, but not yellowy. So um, I'm gonna use one of my filters. So the preset that I use um, I ha it's called Tennessee. That's the one I use almost every single time. So as soon as I apply Tennessee, it already looks almost exactly how I want it. So you can see from the before and after, there is a little bit of lens correction. That's why you see um, things in the center shrink down. Um, it's just correcting. Actually, I guess it makes it bigger. It's just correcting for the Apple or for the iPhones. Um, lens correction. 
So you can see that everything brightens up a little bit more. There's a little bit more white, which I really like to have a lot of white in my photos, at least in the background, so that um, whatever I'm taking a photo of, whether it's me or something else, that is just kind of at the center of attention. So you can see that the fog um, really brightens up. Um, my skin tone changes color, so uh, before it was... I don't know, like a little more pink, and now it's a little more tan. And you can see that some of the colors are just brightened up a little bit. So I think that this filter makes things look a lot more realistic. So as this one is, I wouldn't really make any other changes. I really like how this looks. Um, if you zoom in, I mean, I look like I'm the same color everywhere. I don't have any, like, weird things on the ground that I would remove. And that's honestly a really good edit. So I wouldn't do anything else after that. Okay, and the next picture here is a photo I've already posted as well. This was a photo that was taken um, in the downtown area where I live. And I'm also going to apply the Tennessee filter to this. So this one definitely needs a little bit of correction. So right now, as it is, my lips are pretty much gone. Um, I'm not sure why is has to do with some of the color settings but for whatever reason on this picture my lips are gone i wasn't wearing lipstick that day and i almost never do so that's probably part of the reason and then the building behind me is a little bit yellowy so i'm just going to adjust some of the colors here and i'm not going to adjust any of the lights because i think the lighting looks fine so i'm going to go into color and the temperature is at a negative 8 towards the blue side instead of the yellow side, which um, is fine. But the grays are coming off a little bit blue. So if I adjust that over to the yellow, it warms it up a little bit. It also warms up the red in the brick. So I'm going to make it a little bit more yellow. It also makes my hair look a little bit more of the natural color that it is. And my skin tone brighten, or warms up a little bit. I'm not going to adjust the green or the purple tint. I think that looks fine. Vibrance and saturation I think is fine on this picture. But I am going to hit mix and go to the yellow color. And here the saturation is up plus 5. So to get rid of some of that yellowy like sun reflecting off the building, I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. And you can see that the yellow pretty much disappears. So I'm going to put it... Here, 51 is fine. And then I'm going to go to the purple. It's either the purple or the red that adjusts my lips. I think it's the purple. So right now, luminance is at 34. That just means the purple colors will either look darker or lighter, like more white or more black. So I'm going to turn down the luminance a little bit, and that should brighten up my lips. You can see if I put luminance all the way down they look like I've had some wine <laughs> but I'm gonna put it up a little bit here looks fine that looks natural and then um, I'm gonna pull up the saturation a little bit just to give it a little bit more color that's definitely the color of my lips naturally um, but let's just see what this does so this actually that's more <laughs> than pink hue so if you put the hue up a little bit um, It'll change to more red or more purple. So obviously my lips aren't purple, so I'm gonna make it more of like a red pink. And I'll just up the saturation a little bit more. And we'll zoom out. And honestly, that looks pretty good, and this is like pretty close to what I would post. But I do think that the blue from the sky is radi radiating a little bit too much on the grays and the browns in the shutters and the portico or whatever you wanna call it on the building. So I'm gonna take the blue color mix and I'm just gonna turn down the saturation on that you'll also see how um, it turns a little brown which is fine um, you can see that my jeans turn more black because right now they're a little blue so I'll put it to negative 26 sounds good and that's pretty much all that I would do there I think that's a pretty good photo Okay, next is a photo that we took um, on the top of a rooftop parking deck <laughs> in Chattanooga as well. So again, this photo is fine. <laughs> it's It looks fine, but um, 
the colors just don't really like flow together super well it just doesn't look special this one actually does look colorful because the sun's on me but i don't love how the cement is like gray and dirty looking and the red's a little bit distracting in the buildings behind it so and one more thing <laughs> i look a little pale except for my legs which my legs always keep the tan a little bit more so i am really pale right now but that should change this week when i put my fake tan on so in this photo once again i'm going to use tennessee and automatically i already love what it looks like the sky just has more dimension now you can see that's like white to blue which is not a setting that i do that it just brings out those natural colors in the sky the rusted cement and brick buildings behind me are a little bit more muted which is what i wanted my skin is a little bit a little bit more brown rather than red and the gray on the cement it just brightens up a little bit more so it looked like it had black spots but the blacks were turned up in this photo in the um light so you can see that it just really brightens up that cement. Also, not that it's wonderful from a product photography um, standpoint if we were putting this on Boho Bus's website, but my sweater I'm wearing is from Boho Bus and the middle teal line kind of disappears, but all the other lines in the um, sweater just turn a little bit less harsh, which I like. I don't really like any super bold colors. I like more muted colors but I also like the sky and my jeans to be a good like turquoise blue and I like my skin to be a nice brown so this looks really good from my perspective everywhere um one thing that you could do if there are any blemishes that you want to hide so I actually kind of like some of the blemishes in the cement but let's just say we wanted to remove this little power outlet that's next to me. What you can do is you can go to um, healing and the healing tool will open up and I need to make this pretty big. And what you do is you just draw over whatever it is that you want to hide. And it probably won't disappear exactly right the first time, but as you can see... It did a pretty good job, so what you do is you keep the spot that it's hidden over, and then you can adjust, so that actually looks almost perfect. I would maybe, like, move this a little bit here, move it back so it lines up, and just hit enter, and you've pretty much <laughs> made that power strip disappear, so actually... I really love that. So the photo, this is one of the outfits that I'm going to post today when this video goes live. So I might go do that on the actual photo I'm going to post because I don't know if this is the actual one I'm going to post. So again, just looking over this real quick. So again, just looking over this real quick, I might actually adjust the orange colors to make my skin tone look a little bit tanner um it looks fine in my face and my leg and foot there but i'm just gonna see what adjusting the orange would do so i'm gonna make the luminance a little darker and then turn up the saturation a little bit yeah perfect okay so not a huge difference there i'll actually zoom in and hit back so you can see in my face that it just gets a little bit oops I did the wrong one okay so that was healed so now you'll see the change in my skin tone as it gets a little bit darker so I like it better there so now that one is perfect so just real quickly, I wanted to show you some more of my um, presets that I have for sale on my blog. It's linked below. And I'm just going to show you all of these on the same photo so you can get kind of an idea of how they would edit your photo. So the very first edit and preset that I ever used, I, I named it Mexico. 
and this one is super warm super orange and super bright so it's a little bit too orange for me now but this preset looks really good on um photos of things so the skin tone for me turns a little bit too orange so i can't use it really on pictures of my face but let's try it so for example on this photo of po market i think it looks really nice on this one so as you can see skin tones turn a little bit orange but it makes things and inanimate objects very pretty the next one is Georgia, and Georgia is a lot like Tennessee. They're actually almost exactly similar, but some of the color tones are a little bit different. So this is Georgia, and it looks good, and then this is Tennessee. So Tennessee is just a little bit darker. Um, Georgia is a little bit brighter and a little bit more colorful. And then California is also one of my favorites. California is really, really trendy looking. Um, it has more of that um, contrasted look, a little bit darker, a little bit um, matter, matter, more matte. I like California, but I can't commit to making my entire feed look like this because it doesn't look totally realistic. And I really like my pictures to look realistic. I like the colors to look pretty, but better than realistic. And I like the lighting and everything to look very bright. So I do absolutely love this look. So I use this preset for a lot of the photos I put in my Instagram stories. But I, like I said, I just can't commit to making all my photos and my feed look like this because it's just not a realistic representation of the colors. But it looks very cool and very trendy. And then Tennessee, we've already gone over this entire video. Uh, the last one is DC. And DC, DC is also another one of those trendy, very dark, moody photos, um, photo edits. But again, it's a little bit orange, so I use it mostly on inanimate objects and my dogs because I have a black dog and a brown and white dog, and I can't, it's really hard to take photos of black dogs, especially next to a lighter dog. A black dog almost always looks like completely like light is shining on them with white spots, even though they don't have white spots. My dog does have some, but not on her face. So I usually use DC when I'm taking pictures of her because it keeps her features realistic um, and also makes my other dog <laughs> look good too. So this preset was entirely created for my dogs. That's so sad. If you're interested in purchasing any of these um, presets, you can head on over to my blog and buy them all there. It's an instant download. All you need is Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom like on your desktop. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me about them. You can leave a comment below. Tell me which one of the presets is your favorite. And um, if you have any questions on how I edit otherwise, I know I don't edit very much. Like I said, I like everything to be super realistic looking. And really that one preset Tennessee that I use is really a grab and go. You just apply it and you're good to go unless you're in different light situations. If you are interested in buying any of my presets, I'm doing $5 off my package of all of the presets together. All you have to do is use the coupon that is in the bio below. Don't forget to share them with me when you've downloaded them. I will be um, showing before and afters on my Instagram stories like I usually do throughout the next few weeks <laughs> until I am no longer selling presets. So if you're still interested but you're just not ready to commit today, you can go follow me and just see how my um, filters are looking across all different photos. Thank you so much for watching how I edit my photos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Go visit my blog to see some of my most recent posts with all of my edited photos included. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at RachelRegal underscore and come on back for the next video. See you later.